Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. As men and women age, uh, you know, men are tired of the race. I mean, they've been running it since their late teens. They're exhausted. All they want to do is take a deep breath. They want to retire. They want to play golf. They want to, you know, just enjoy life. And women are raring to go uh, because they feel like they've fulfilled their responsibilities, their kids are out on their own, it's now time for them to show what they can do. There's a, an army of women and, a, and frankly a very large group of older women who could make a real difference uh, to America's corporations, businesses, uh, academia, politics, you name it. All right, folks, um, that was something Hillary said a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I play it because joining us now, uh, once again, I'm happy to say, is Webb Hubble, former Associate Attorney General of the United States in the Clinton administration, uh, former law partner of, uh, of Hillary Clinton, and uh, also the author of a, uh, a great new book, and it's the first of a series of novels. Um, uh, it's called When Men Betray. We don't, we don't betray. I didn't hear Hillary say men betray. <laughs> Webb, how are you? I'm doing fine. I didn't hear her say that either. <laughs> we'll get to the book. I want to talk about that, and it's very exciting for for you. And I look forward to to, see, to reading the, uh, the the first uh, first in this series. But um, do you do you believe that was too much of a blanket statement? Obviously, you've been through a lot. You're you and I. We've both we're all aging. Um, yet you're you're undertaking lectures and series of books and all. You're not sitting back and opening the belt and drinking beer and that's it. Uh, Hillary's kind of implying that it's only women who want to, you know, at, at her age, basically, want to go get the world. Uh, I would disagree with her on that. Like you said, I've, I've been writing books for the last three years, going out and speaking and, and writing articles about what's going on in the country. I do think she is right that there are a lot of women who could make huge contributions both in business and in politics. And I'd like to see more women in politics. We've screwed it up pretty badly. Well, yeah, uh, all right. I mean, okay. I don't, you know, <laughs> I, if you want to blame it on men, I, you know, I guess I that's don't blame it. it on men. I just blame it on us. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, 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 Hillary as 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 a as a president. Now, let, let's let's look at it. I'm asking you. I, everybody listening to us knows my opinion. Um, how much is the baggage of Benghazi and, and her time in the Department of State? I mean, I know she traveled more than any other Secretary of State, yet she's been asked to name her biggest accomplishment. She couldn't. They're calling it, some are calling it the Ted Kennedy moment when he was asked when he was running in the primary against Jimmy Carter all those years ago, why do you want to be president? And he really had no answer. Uh, with Benghazi, with Russia, the whole thing, can she overcome that? Oh, I think so. I do think so. I think, for one, she's got a whole book coming out about her accomplishments as Secretary of State. So I think that will be the answer. To I, are you aware question. of any of them? I, you know, I don't get into one versus the other. I know that, you know, for the last four years we've been getting out of Iraq and we've been getting out of Afghanistan. Right. To me, that's very important. And uh, okay, so she'll she'll overcome that. She'll overcome testifying, I guess, as she will have to at the uh, at the hearing or the uh, select committee. We had uh, uh, Hank Scheinkopf, Democratic strategist, on here yesterday, and uh, and when I went home, I saw other people had said similar things that they believe that uh, if if they if they do call Hillary to testify before the select committee on Benghazi, it could backfire on Republicans and could uh, help her win the White House. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's going to be the similar moment either way, but I, from experience, would say uh, confronting Hillary is never a wise thing to do. Well, that, that's <laughs> all right. Yeah, you do speak from experience on that, I, I, I do guess. Let me ask you also, I'd be remiss if I did not, uh, without getting into the minutia of it all, another, another thing, and maybe it's good that it's coming out now, and, but I, for whatever reason, Monica Lewinsky has chosen to write her tell-all in Vanity Fair. It's out now, or it's coming out in a week or whatever, whenever that magazine comes out. I must confess I, I don't follow it and read it. Uh, but um, she blasts uh, Hillary in it, uh, and um, I mean, is this something? Something that uh, will make a difference to the voters, do you think? I really think that's old news. I really do. I think, I think, to some extent, it's all coming out now, and and the the election is going to be about the present, not the past. Yeah. All right. Um, when, when you when you look around uh, politics today, you say, you know, well, we screwed it up. And uh, what do you what do you think of President Obama as a president? 
I, you know, I think he's doing as much as he can, given the divided Congress and the the attitude now of not getting along uh, as being a political strategy. I, I, I think, like most of the country, I'm more disappointed in Congress than I would say in, in President Obama. Really? Uh, do, do you do you think, though, that the people, uh, I mean, the new poll out yesterday shows that the midterm prediction, the, the, the generic ballot for Congress, has a four-point lead for Republicans, which is much larger than in 94, when Republicans uh, took the House with Newt Gingrich, and in 2010. Uh, and they're predicting, you know, based on that and based on the president's popularity right now and, and the fact that 65 percent of the people say they want the next president to have policies that differ from Obama's policies. Uh, do you think uh, we're going to see a sea change in November in 2014 uh, here? I think it's dangerous to predict what's going to happen next October and uh, in November. I think it's dangerous to predict. Because there's so much time between now and then? There's so much time and there's so many things that could happen. All right, uh, and, and I want to ask you when you when you compare um, when you well let me ask you this when you look at the Justice Department today, okay, and uh, you know having served in the Justice Department obviously under under uh, Janet Reno, when you look at Eric Holder who also served in that Justice Department, uh, and you see he's been held in contempt of Congress, and you see the criticism of of uh, of Obama you know changing laws unilaterally without going to Congress, whether it's on welfare reform, immigration, deportation. Uh, of course, Obamacare, changing deadlines unilaterally. Um, does it concern you? Steve, I actually think Eric Holder is, in some areas has done a fantastic job in the areas uh, in late, relating to marijuana reform, uh, in relating to sentencing reform. I think uh, Eric Holder has done a great job. And does anything concern you? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I have some concerns about the overall administration policy when it comes to the spying on Americans. I think that is concerning. And I think the use of drones is another area of concern. Uh, but I think there's, again, a lot of blame in those areas all around. All right, let's move uh, to, to your book, When, when Men Betray. Um, uh, it, this is a, uh, it, it's fictional, but uh, it, readers might uh, recognize uh, some of the uh, personalities uh, and the, uh, the people who uh, have been on the, uh, the political scene out in Arkansas, correct? I think so. I think, I mean, I drew on, like any author, you draw on your experiences. The book is not about the Clintons, but I do draw on my experiences, and I've had a lot. No, absolutely. Yeah, well, you've had a lot. You've had a lot with the Clintons and us. So tell us about um, the, the character here. Uh, um, you know, yeah, yeah, who, who, who does he represent? Is, is, you know, is, he, uh, is he you? I mean, is he? <laughs> no, I, think, I think every fictional work is a little autobiographical. Right. Uh, and so, yes, I was a lawyer, and the main character, Jack Patterson, is a lawyer. But that's where the similarity stopped. All right. Well, that is, and how, many, how, how far are you going to take this series, do you believe? Well, I'm, I'm working on book three right now. The publisher's got book two, and we'll just see if it's popular, see if people like it. I, so far, the reviews have been very good. I mean, surprisingly good. I, and I'm excited. I'm enjoying what, doing what I'm doing right now. And, of course, the book is all over the place, Amazon, and every, uh, everywhere people could get books, they could, uh, they could pick up uh, When Men Betray. That's right. They sure can, and I hope they enjoy it. Let me ask you one more before I let you go. Um, you know, as people, uh, even on the left, as they as they critique President Obama, they they can't help but compare him to. President Clinton, mm -hmm. and certainly it's day and night. I mean, President Clinton, you know, well, if you want to call it triangulate, I think that's a term Dick Morris came up with, or if you want to just call it working with the opposition, getting things done, reaching out, his personality, where Obama, and, and you wrote a piece about the closing down of the government uh, back uh, I'm familiar with, but, you know, Obama at that point said, I will not negotiate, I will not talk, I will not give an inch, and he did not. Uh, which is uh, not only unprecedented when it comes to, if you compare to Clinton, but even other presidents. So th the, the style certainly, um, d well, let me put it this way. Do you think Obama could, could, would do well to learn and look back at uh, how Clinton operated? I think any president will look back and see how, including President Clinton, how he worked, worked uh, the houses of Congress and how he 
tried to find ways uh, to get things done. Uh, yes, I do think he could do a better job at that, but I also think Congress can do a whole lot better job at working with the president. Just They've been saying no a lot as well. All right. Webb Hubble, great. We'll have you back, I hope, and uh, good luck with the books, and we'll speak to you soon, sir. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Webb Hubble, ladies and gentlemen, former associate uh, U.S. Attorney General and uh, former law partner to Hillary and author of When Men Betray, the first of at least uh, three, a three-part series. There it is. See, yeah, look at that. It's better to look at that cover than me anyway. Who wants to see me? Um, all right. Confronting Hillary is a bad idea. I speak from experience, he says. <laughs> okay. Uh, I always sense a little headline. You know, I, I have a nose for news. Uh, some would say I have a nose for two newses. All right, we're coming back right here. Don't go away. The Steve Ballsberg Show. And you know what's next. It's Give Me Five. Don't go away.